What's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how we more than tripled our clicks and impressions using this buyer persona ChatGPT prompt. The first prompt we're looking at is specifically for B2B. We're turning ChatGPT into a marketing researcher who speaks and writes fluent English. And its task is to build a persona based on the values that we're going to provide it. So who is your target audience? You want to have a job title, company size, business category, where they're located, and their company purpose. And then we're going to provide ChatGPT with the business challenges. So why is this person looking for you or your services? And based off of that information, we're asking ChatGPT to include specific details about this persona's goals, pain points, and decision criteria for selecting your product or your service. I've already created an example, and now I'm going to use it within ChatGPT so that you have a better idea of what the output is. ChatGPT finished, and it created a persona profile for a marketing director, which is the example that I provided it. With this information, now we can create a designated landing page specifically targeting this person or this group of people. So we have their professional background, and with it, we know their education level, their experience, and their skills. So when you're creating this landing page, you want to take this information into account. We have their goals, and with these goals, they go in-depth. So ChatGPT has given us an example of what they would be looking for. They want to increase their fundraising revenue by 20% in the next fiscal year through targeted digital marketing campaigns. On my hypothetical landing page, I would use user testimonials about how I've done something similar for other clients. And then I could also provide what services would be in line with this end goal. So in my case, I offer search engine optimization, copywriting, and content marketing. But if I were to add paid media, I would also include that or social media as well. This pain point section is probably the most important one because if we can identify the pain points, we can identify how to solve them. We know that they're working with a limited budget and also a limited team, we can create the content on this page to reflect these two bullet points. I can suggest that I will go in and I will help them. Not only will I create the strategy, I will work with them to implement it, whether that comes through them giving me permission to access their CMS and I upload changes to their website directly, or working hand in hand with our web developers in order to enact these changes. I would also tell them my processes to ensure that I'm getting them an ROI on their SEO investment. We know that they're having difficulty in reaching and resonating with their core demographic. So how can I as a digital marketer ensure that their content is going to resonate with the right audience and also appear in front of the correct audience? Also on this landing page, I would highlight any previous work that I've done with nonprofits. If available, I would have a testimonial from someone that worked with that nonprofit, along with their name, the company, and the services that I provided for them. Just skipping around ChatGPT's output, we also have this section here for the communication preferences. And this is going to be an excellent resource for us to provide to ChatGPT in return. So when we have ChatGPT create this landing page for us, we're specifically going to call out that we want clear, concise, and data-backed proposals and information. So this way we avoid any kind of flowery prose that ChatGPT typically gives us straight out of the box. And now that we have our prompt persona, we can follow up with some really targeted questions because this new persona is going to respond to you how a human would. So what information would you want to know from this persona? I'm going to select this question here. What information are you most likely to search for? And then on my website, not only will I have the landing page, I can start creating some blog posts in order to really create that topical authority around the subject matter. Once you've done that, ChatGPT is going to provide you an output similar to the one that you have on your screen. One of the bullet points that it provided me is exploring effective digital marketing strategies, channels, and tools that have proven successful for nonprofits. So if I've already done this in the past, I can create a case study that resonates with this user by showing what we've done. And then a little further down, it specifically says that this persona would be interesting 
interested in case studies and success stories. So once again, engage with this persona like you would a human. Follow up on specific bullet points. What type of information would you be interested in a case study? What would resonate the most with you if you were looking for a digital marketing agency? These questions, in addition to the persona, are a really powerful way to craft your website and generate some more interest. The B2C prompt is going to be very similar to the B2B one, but we're going to be altering the values just slightly. So we're still starting off with ChatGPT becoming a marketing researcher who speaks and writes in fluent English. That's not going to change. What is going to change, however, is that we're entering the type of shopper, where they're located, your product category, where they are in their buyer's journey. So top of funnel, they're just starting their research middle of funnel or bottom of funnel? What are the goals of this persona? And then we're asking ChatGPT to include specific details about the needs, goals, pain points, shopping habits, and decision criteria for buying your product. And lastly, what is their preferred channel? Are they interested specifically in social media? Do they do their shopping online or in person? This type of information is really going to help you craft your campaign. So I'm using the example that I'm creating a persona for a 25 year old professional woman from New York City who's interested in skincare and makeup. She's well informed, research driven, and looks for products with proven results. So now we have our type of shopper, where she's from, what she's interested in. We specify that she's highly qualified, so she's at the bottom of the funnel. And then I also provided a little more information about what she values. But that last line you don't have to include. I just wanted a very tailored response. Now that we have our persona named Emily Thompson, we can start creating content specifically for Emily. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking to yourself, why do I need to know about her physical appearance and style? Well, if Emily is my core demographic for this product, on my product page, I'm going to include images that would resonate with her. I'm going to include images of what she looks like, and the model's going to have on makeup that's subtle and emphasizes a fresh, natural look. So again, we want the imagery to resonate with our user. People are going to purchase from a website if they have images of people that look like them, or at least what they strive to be. We know that she's skeptical of marketing jargon and that she's interested in reviews, clinical studies, and ingredient lists. So I would have all of that information directly on my product page. We know that Emily is interested in sustainability, so I would create a blog post on that. We can also start developing third-party resources for Parasite SEO. We know that Emily is interested in peer-reviewed studies and educational content, specifically from YouTube, Instagram, and forums. So in this scenario, I would recommend this brand create YouTube videos with skincare experts and dermatologists that highlight what goes into this product, how to apply this product, the benefits of this product, and so on and so forth. An example question that I used in this scenario is, what do you, Emily Thompson, dislike the most about shopping for lipstick? And I'm reminding ChatGPT that it's supposed to assume the identity of this new persona. And then it's giving me some more information about what they dislike, and we can reverse engineer this to provide the information that they do like. So in the second paragraph here, it says, I'm concerned about the ingredients in lipstick. So on the product page, I would highlight each individual ingredient that's going into this. And then I could also create a blog post about what these ingredients do, how they're made, and how they go into my product. She's really interested in transparency. So this blog post is going to be a direct line to showcase that we as a brand are transparent and we want her to know exactly what goes into our products. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it resourceful because I use this for every single one of my clients to better understand who their audience is and how to create content that resonates with them. At the end of the day, our job is to create value for the user. And how do you create value for them? Well, first you have to understand them. And this prompt is going to be a huge piece to that puzzle. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs up anyway. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, this is Todd.